Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Tuesday, August 2nd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Notre Dame game is in 32 days, the game against Michigan in 116 days. And you can add another number to that countdown today, two days until the Buckeyes open fall camp. We've gone through winter workouts, spring football, camp season, summer conditioning, now just a month away from the start of the regular season. There are a lot of reasons to be excited about that, but one of them is that you're going to be seeing a lot more of Tony Gerdeman, both here and on the Buckeye Weekly podcast, as we start ramping up to the season. Tony, thanks for being here. Tom, uh, thank you very much for having me. Good morning to you. It is uh, great fun to be back here talking fall camp. It is almost finally here, and camp is uh, its one of the best times of the year. thats I can say that because we are not participating in any of it. So uh, in terms of the the actual physical exercise of it, and we instead just get to cover it, which is the, the much better option of the two, in my opinion. Well, we're going to start today's show with a look at some of the biggest storylines on offense entering fall camp. And normally you hear, oh boy, it's the quarterback battle. Who's going to be the starting quarterback? There is not a lot of drama around that this year. C.J. Stroud, I don't want to spoil anything, C.J. Stroud. Probably better than 50-50 to enter uh, this, the season uh, as the starting quarterback for the Notre Dame game. But I think the big drama there, Tony, is who is number two for that game? Who is it? Devin, Devin Brown? Can he pass Kyle McCord? Is Kyle McCord? He had a year, uh, a year of a head start over Devin Brown, both five-star quarterbacks. We saw a decent amount of uh, McCord last year. He got the start against Akron. So can Devin Brown pass Kyle McCord? Or does Kyle McCord enter the season as the number two quarterback behind C.J. Stroud? Uh, yes to all of that, Tom, because I do think the quarterbacks, the talent that Ryan Day recruits at Ohio State, a freshman should be good enough to win the backup job, a true freshman, just as Kyle McCord did last year. However, you're also recruiting very talented players, so they shouldn't be losing the job to a true freshman quarterback. And we saw what happened when Jack Miller lost that backup job to Kyle McCord last year. He ended up transferring. Uh, Kyle McCord, having done it, knows what it takes to win the backup job also has seen a an older player lose it. So uh, he's gone into this off season from what I've been told, preparing to be the starter. And that's kind of what you have to do to be the backup. You can't necessarily go in it preparing to win the job as the backup. You got to show that you are as good as the starter. Give the coaches something to think about, even though they know who their starting quarterback is. But if Kyle McCord comes in there and looks like the starter, then there's really not much of a battle. But I am interested to see how long they do compete. Because, again, you you do have to start prepping for Notre Dame. So do they give Devin Brown two weeks to try to catch Kyle McCord? And then after two weeks and it doesn't happen, it's like, okay, now we're in game prep mode. You got, you got two weeks to prep for the game, and that backup quarterback has to prepare like the starter. They got to get him ready. They can't have him competing and splitting reps with the third string guy. He's got to be the number two guy, got to be ready to go. And I expect Kyle McCord to, uh, to come through with that, with that second team job. All right. And then the question at running back, I think is fairly similar to the question at at, uh, quarterback. You got a pretty, a pretty established guy who came in, saw his first real action last year, Trevion Henderson, and pretty much locked that starting job up. But again, you've got a decent amount of talent behind those behind him. You got Mayan Williams, you got Evan Pryor, you got Dallin Hayden. Who can you know? Who is going to win either the number two job, or who's going to maybe establish themselves? Maybe more specifically, who's going to establish themselves as someone who you know has some kind of a role there, whether that's you know third down back kind of thing out of the backfield, or you know who you know has that can establish themselves as the guy who can pick up the blitz well enough that you can trust him in those spots. You know, how do those other guys on that roster fit together? Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. And how do they fit with the some of the new running scheme that Justin Fry brings in as the offensive line coach? Who fits that best and who can get that momentum? And how much of this is a 1A, versus, a 1A and 1B with Travion Henderson and Mayan Williams? I think we'll, we're still trying to, everybody's still trying to figure that out. But it may change game to game depending on who gets hot and you know, does that normally mean 15 carries for Travion Henderson and seven for Mayan Williams? Is it, is it, you know, is it broken down like that? Or, and then how much can Evan Pryor come in? Dallin Hayden, I think he's going to have to wait his turn unless he just completely comes in and blows everybody away. But the experience that everybody else has, Evan Pryor, we know Tony Alford, the running backs coach, has talked him up 
constantly saying they need to find ways to get him involved, to get him on the field. Now that they've talked about that, let's see that in camp some more. Let's see that come to fruition and, and then see it happen during the season. But I think it's I think it's broken down pretty well in terms of the hierarchy of Henderson, Williams, and Pryor. But also keep in mind, Mayan Williams was a starter for the first two games last year, and he lost his job. So he's seen that, you know what, if you are the best player, the job will go to you. So I think there's still some of that out there where he's very confident in his, in his abilities. And if he's producing better than Travion Henderson, he's eventually going to get the job and get the carries. And we have seen them sort of split carries between two guys. If there isn't one guy who's clearly better than the other, you mean the Mike Weber, J.K. Dobbins season, they just kind of went back and forth. And sometimes that worked well and sometimes that didn't. But yeah, if 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 they're if you're producing the ball, you know, the carries are potentially there for you to get them. Uh, if anyone is wondering, hey, what about Marcus Crowley? He didn't mention Marcus Crowley. He, he did medically retire uh, back in May, had a bad recovery from a knee injury. And uh, he decided to hang it up back in May. So that's why we didn't mention him, just in case that kind of got lost, I think, during the offseason uh, off shuffle. I did want to mention him there. Uh, at wide receiver, man, oh, man. There, you know, there, there, are people, there are times when you're looking at a position, it's like, oh, I don't know. Who could they, you know, who are they going to have start? I'm not, who's good enough to start out of this group? Uh, that is not the concern at wide receiver. The concern at wide receiver is, yeah, they've got like six guys who could potentially start very easily for pretty much any Big Ten team. Where are they all going to fit? How are they How are they going to, uh, you know, work those snaps around? Who's playing inside? Who's playing outside? If, you know, if Jackson Smith the Jigba has played inside, but they, you know, Emeka Igbuka is one of the three best, well, which one of those guys goes outside? I think Marvin Harrison has gotten a lot of hype over the course of the spring. You've heard a lot from Julian Fleming. I mean, there's just... And, you know, this doesn't even get into Cam Babb, who is, you know, potentially one of the most interesting stories on the team this fall. And then you've also got the four true freshmen coming in. There's just Jaden Ballard was someone we talked about a lot in the spring. I mean, there's just, there are so many guys here that we can talk about who, you know, how do these pieces all fit together? And how do you keep, you know, how do you, you get everyone as many touches as, as they deserve? Hurry up offense and throw the ball a lot. Um, next question. Uh, and really, uh, that's that's a joking answer, but it's also a serious answer. The best way to get a bunch of people touches is to have as many snaps as possible. Um, unfortunately, some of these quick throws are going to go for touchdowns. So, you know, they're, they probably won't have as many plays as they like because they'll be scoring so often. And when they're throwing deep to guys, that will take big chunks of yardage. But I think if Jackson Smith and Jigba, I fully expect him to be the slot receiver. If he isn't, and they put a Mecca Ibuka there, that speaks volumes to me about how they feel about Ibuka. But I, I still expect Smith and Jigba to be that guy inside. Marvin Harrison, of course, at the X. I, I still think it's Julian Fleming at the Z to start out with. And then a Mecca is the fourth guy in. And wherever you want him, you can put him wherever. And if he needs to go in the slot, then Jackson Smith and Jigba can go wherever else. Like they could all. As Brian Hartline has said multiple times over the offseason, they can all play every position. We saw Marvin Harrison catch a touchdown out of the slot last year in the Rose Bowl. Chris Olave did it all you know, quite a bit as well, not in the Rose Bowl, but throughout his career. So they can move guys around as they see fit, and they get everybody their reps. I think you start out with those four. And then it's who is five, who is six, who is seven. And the way everybody talks about Cam Babb, like to me, he feels like the fifth guy, and I, I say fifth guy giving deference to the first four I mentioned, but can he get into that top four? Um, I think that's, that's a tough ask for anybody, but I'm interested to see how much they get him involved, how much they want to push him in camp. I think that's another concern where maybe you know the, the 2000 rep club, I don't know that he's, he's there, but maybe you just don't. I don't want to say you don't push him too much, but maybe take it a little bit easier so that he can get to the season and, and just because I think that's going to be a concern until he's out there playing. Then you know, Jaden Ballard comes in. Is he that fifth? Is he that sixth guy? A guy we didn't talk about, you, you didn't mention, Xavier Johnson, but the former walk on who is in his fifth year, has been around forever, has played defensive back, has played running back, has played wide receiver. 
has done it all of it. Whenever a coach is asking him to do something, he does it. I think they feel like he can do something as well. But now you're talking fifth, sixth, seventh guy before you're getting into the true freshman. I'm interested to see can any of those true freshmen work into that top six, top six, into that two deep. And then how much rotation is there going to be? Is there really going, going to be a legit top six? Or is it just going to be a, maybe a, a group of five? But, you know, Jaden Ballard in his second year, Xavier Johnson being a vet that he is, I I think there's there's possibilities. I think certainly there will be more rotating this year than, than last year and, and the year before. But how much they do will be determined in, in camp, and I'm interested to see how that all shakes out. There are so many different, you know, permutations of that lineup, and you figure they're going to be up on teams enough in some of these early games not necessarily Notre Dame, but Arkansas State, Toledo, some of you know some of the lower level Big Ten teams. You're going to have the opportunity potentially to have Kyle McCord, to have Devin Brown in there. And when they're in the game, you don't want them just handed off. They're going to be throwing the ball potentially in the second half a little more than you might expect if the score is uh, you know forty something to three in some of those games. Well, you might you might you know kind of keep the pedal down a little longer just to get those quarterbacks some option some opportunities, but also to get those wide receivers some opportunities. So you will, uh, we'll, uh, I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of guys with receptions by uh, oh, about week three of the season. You're going to probably have, you know, 10, 12 different receivers on that stat sheet uh, for the season. Uh, next up, uh, someone, you know, a, a group that we don't necessarily see on that receiving stat sheet all that often, the tight ends. However, Tony, it is canon on, uh, on this show. It is canon on Buckeye Weekly. It is the year of the tight end. So if it is, in fact, the year of the tight end, Tony, who is that tight end? Because it feels like they have a bunch of guys who they like, and they like for certain stuff. And, you know, Mitch Rossi has the Mitch Rossi role, and Cade Stover has potentially the Cade Stover role. And, boy, they seem to like Joe Royer a lot, but, you know, we haven't really seen it from Joe Royer yet. So who ends up being the tight end? Who is who is the leading receiver among the tight ends? And who maybe has the most snaps among the tight ends this season? Yeah, I think the the title of year of the tight end, I think it's a little misleading. I think perhaps a more accurate descriptor would be year of the tight ends. Can we can we agree with that? Because I think it will take more than one, and certainly more than one will play. I think we all agree Cade Stover is your number one, but each of these guys can do different things, so it depends on what they, they want those guys to do. However, you can't allow that to dictate what you're doing. You can't become predictable if – Mitch Rossi is in there. Defense is like, okay, well, they've got the fullback tight end in there, so this is going to be a run. If G. Scott is in there, okay, this is a pass. Like, they need to be multiple with their different guys, and you can't just pigeonhole guys. So I think that's where this camp, you got to figure out who can do what. And if if somebody can't do more than one thing, it's going to be hard for them to get on the field during the season. If you've got a guy that can do everything, now you can play in any any scenario. You could be all – you could be – they're in there all day in 12 personnel and never have to leave the field because you can block, you can catch, you can s- spread out, you can you know, spread all the way to the sideline as we've seen Jeremy Ruckert do in the past and, uh, and other tight ends. So I think this fall camp for everybody is showing the versatility, but also it still comes down to you got to be able to run block and pass block. And, and I think catching the ball, is it is what it is but they're going to put their best blockers out there because this is an offense that can throw the ball with anybody but has questions about its toughness and its physicality. And I think some of those questions will need to be answered right out of the gate against Notre Dame. And speaking of good blockers, let's talk a little offensive line. Uh, It feels like the top five, your starting five on the offensive line, I think it's just kind of, I think we came out of the spring game going, "Uh huh, okay, I think I know who the starting five is. The big question in the offensive line is, and then what? Who's behind the starting five? Because you're feeling pretty good about, about, you know, Paris Johnson and Matt Jones and Luke Whipler and uh, Donovan Jackson and Dewan Jones. It's like, okay, that's good. You're, you're very happy with the top five. And then what? And it feels like there are some spots they are kind of comfortable and then there's some spots where you've got guys who they like, but who are coming off of injuries. And it feels like, you know, the big question in the offensive line is you've got your five. Can you come out of fall camp with feeling pretty good about the next five, too? 
Yeah, we've talked about a similar situation in the past uh, recently. I don't know if it was Buckeye Weekly or is this show where is this team, is this just a defense of strong safeties? Like, is this offensive line just a bunch of guards that they need to put into tackles in terms of the backups? Like, is Josh Fryer, is he a guard? Do they need to put him at tackle? Enoch Vamahi has played guard and tackle throughout his career, but is more of a guard body type in terms of height. And so is is he a guard that they have to put at tackle? Or are there guards that are developed or tackles that are developing like Zen Mahalski? You know, is Ben Crispin doing what he needs to do? And do they get anything out of these freshmen? So I'm I'm really interested to see because we keep talking about Josh Fryer and Enoch Vamahi being six and seven. But if they are they can't both be guards, you know, because the you want them to play different positions. So if they are six and seven, which one of them is a tackle? Which one of them is a guard? And how much are the young offensive tackles pushing any of those guys? Grant Toutant, who has been around now for a while, but has been low on the totem pole. Guys like that. We've heard some good things about Zen Maholski, so let's see what happens there. I know we both really like George Fitzpatrick in the spring game playing some left tackle there. I, I think he's one to watch. But then again, is the third tackle Donovan Jackson, who is the starting left guard? That's that's another question, which is that might be the answer, but you know you still need some tackles to to develop in the in in the two deep. And again, where what do they do with Fryer and Vamahi? I think you got to split them up. Yeah, and and you know they may they may be spending a lot of this time sort of figuring out which of these guys fits best and you know they they may not know it feels it feels like they're probably going into camp not necessarily knowing you know not only who is in that circle of trust among the second guys but also who's actually going to be the backup and you may you know maybe you're the backup at uh, left guard but you're also the backup at left tackle or something like that that's that's a real possibility we've seen that in the past with Ohio State offensive lines as well so that that's uh, just one of the many storylines that we're going to be uh, keeping a close eye on this fall at uh, as Ohio State goes through fall camp. And again, that is that starts on Thursday. We are really looking forward to uh, to that. We'll have uh, complete coverage from the Woody Hayes as uh, as fall camp opens up. We'll uh, have a full schedule for you. We're anticipating having kind of a a, a better idea on exactly what and when we'll uh, we'll be in there. And uh, we'll probably have a new episode of Buckeye Weekly coming out uh, either Tuesday today or tomorrow on Wednesday to uh, kind of give you more detail on what exactly we're going to be able to see this fall as we head into fall camp and in the start of the regular season. I can't wait. Uh, you, uh, If you want to hear much more about this team, and I, if you're listening to this, I'm guessing you do, uh, make sure you are subscribed to this show, the uh, Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning Show, wherever you're getting your podcasts. Also make sure you're subscribing to Buckeye Weekly. Tony and I do a uh, very in-depth, uh, in-depth coverage of the team, lots of uh, insight and analysis on when we talk to the players and the coaches, hey, what did they have to say? What did we learn? What did we hear? What did we see? All that kind of stuff. Buckeye Weekly is on the same uh, the same podcast platform you're listening to this on. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you uh, hit ring that bell, subscribe to the channel. Uh, all of that stuff helps uh, helps you make sure you don't ever miss an episode and helps us build our audiences. We're kind of building stuff from scratch again. Did want to thank everyone. You guys have been awesome on uh, subscribing and uh, first of all, subscribing, but also leaving ratings for uh, this new morning show. We were like 148 the last time I looked. Uh, averaging a five-star rating, you guys are the best. Truly, truly, truly appreciate it. It is awesome. If you have not done that, please do it. It does help uh, It does help other folks find these shows as we start to rebuild the morning show audience uh, heading into what should be a pretty darn food, fun, pretty darn fun, good. I said fun and good at the same time. Came out food. It'll probably be food, too. I don't know. Definitely be fun. Definitely be good. Ohio State football season. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.